right, here we go. Hey, girl. Hey, you want to come over and watch a movie? I uh, got something pretty big to show you. Cool. All right, see you in a bit. Hey, come on in, sit down. I don't understand. I thought you said it was going to be big. I just got this installed last week. I don't understand. It, it was just working. Why don't you call me when you can get it up? Well, wait. Don't go. I'll, I, it'll work. I promise. Why, why couldn't you just work? Oh, you son of a... Hey guys, welcome back to Life of Bliss. My name is Kyle, and today I'm going to be going over my review of the BenQ V7050i Ultra Short Throw Projector and the Elite Screens Kestrel Dark UST Fluorizing CLR Screen. All right, so let's just start with, holy cow, this image is pretty incredible. Now, I've had an ALR screen from Elite Screens in my setup before, as well as the Cinegray material from Carl's Place, and I've also tested a few other materials from Carl's Place but I did not know that a projector could look this good with this much ambient light, especially with the amount of windows that we have down here. This is a really sharp and bright image with the 2500 lumens from BenQ and this awesome screen from Elite Screen. So I am really impressed with this image so far. Now I'm probably going to comment on this several times during the video, but that's just because I am so impressed with how it looks with all these lights this setup is the real deal. And speaking of deals, here's a few for you. Rui Pro has decided to give away another 8K fiber optic HDMI 2.1 cable for this video, but instead of the 15 foot, they're giving away the 33 foot cable. Now I've been running the 15 foot cable in this setup for some time now, and I have had a great image quality and zero connection issues. When running longer length cables for projectors, especially when jumping up to the HDMI 2.1, it's really important to have a cable that can go the distance, like, literally the distance. Rui Pro has an excellent track record and my buddy Technodad has actually done testing on these to make sure that they can handle all the bandwidth that they're supposed to. Now to win, all you guys have to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, comment down below. I will be picking a comment on Saturday, September 25th, so be sure to check back on your comment. I will be notifying you on there to get in touch with me, so be sure to check back after this Saturday. And this will not be the last cable that Rui Pro will be giving away on my channel, so be sure to hit that bell notification so you know when the next video drops. BenQ is also extending their offer of 10% off of the V7050i projector from their website using the code LIFEOFBLISSV7050i. If you are interested in one of these projectors, be sure to head to their website and use that code to save $350. Thank you to BenQ, Elite Screens, and Rui Pro for sponsoring this video. Now let's dive into the BenQ V7050i. In the box, you get the projector as well as two remotes, which I'll be going over in a moment, a power cord, a smart TV dongle, and all of the setup and warranty paperwork. The 7050 has a very sleek look, coming in all black, the lens and sensors tucked away in on the top, and a dark mesh grille up front hiding the onboard speakers, as well as sporting a small BenQ logo in the corner. Dimensions are 19 inches wide, 6.2 inches high, and 15.2 inches deep, and weighs in at 22 pounds. Now, one of the interesting things that BenQ did for this projector is incorporate a sliding cover for the lens and sensors below. Power on with the remote or tap the capacitive power button and the cover slides open. This is a great solution to keep dust from getting onto to the lens and sensors. Turn off the projector and the cover slides back. Taking a look at the rest of the projector, each side has large venting for good airflow, along with some USB ports for powering the included dongle and for playing back content. Moving to the back, you'll find the power port, optical input, RS-232 input, another USB type A input, and two HDMI 2.0 inputs with one of those supporting an audio return channel or HDMI arc. Ah, I said it. On the bottom, you have four adjustable feet to fine tune the level of the projector during setup. Now, I'm not going to go over the setup process in this video. I just did a video recently on the installation of both the screen and projector, 
and I gave some helpful tips on how to set your distance between the screen and the projector, as well as how far it needs to be from the bottom. So if you are interested in that, I will link that down in the description below. But long story short, BenQ's auto keystone feature and measurement legs that pop out of the back are extremely helpful to make the setup pretty painless. With the screen in place, you can get the 7050 up and running in five to 10 minutes. With the 0.252 throw ratio lens, you are able to get an 80 inch image in as little as 4.7 inches away from the wall and up to a 120 inch image with the back for the projector just 13 inches away from the wall. The DLP laser light source gives you an extremely bright image at 2500 ANSI lumens and a 20,000 hour bulb life essentially removing the need to ever replace a bulb in the projector. The 60 Hz true 4K image supports HDR10 playback, 98% of DCI-P3 color space, and has up to a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio when using the Smart Eco mode, which I'll show you a little bit later on. Now, if you guys have kids that like to stick their face in front of the projector, or for some reason you decide to do that, uh, there are sensors up top there that will detect any movement and shut the laser light source off. During the installation time and just testing this, these did work very well and shut the laser light off anytime there was any movement over the projector. All right, now with these specs out of the way, let's look at some of the image features and how it looks. Now I may have mentioned this before, but the image looks fan-freaking-tastic. The 4K image is crisp and colors have a ton of pop, even in a bright room with the CLR screen. Now, personally, I thought the HDR content played back on this projector did very well. Colors had a lot of pop to them. The whites were extremely bright. Uh, just the bright images overall seem to do very well. Now, you aren't going to be getting those inky blacks like with an OLED television or even like the NX7 or something like that from JVC. Those are going to be far superior when looking into the black levels, but this does a commendable job um, I, with how bright it is and the contrast that it has. It does a pretty good job at giving you the perception of being pretty dark, but again, it is still on the gray side of black. Now, there are several settings to go into on this projector that you can adjust your image. I'm not going to be doing that here in this video because everyone's situation is going to be different, your screen's going to be different, your light setting is going to be different. So just know that this projector is very versatile and there is a lot of functions in here that you can do to accommodate your room and your setting and change that picture quality and brightness just a bit. But overall, like I said, I had a great experience with it. HDR was very bright, colors popped black levels were decent but on the gray side of black. Now the two remotes that come with the 7050 are either used for controlling the projector only or for controlling the Android TV dongle and the main functions of the projector. Now I honestly love the way BenQ does the remotes. This is the second projector that I've had from them and the remotes are very well laid out. The main controller for the projector has a very solid feel and something that every single remote should come with and that is a backlight. Like I mentioned, the layout is nice, allowing you to change image options on the fly, as well as give you quick access to the test pattern you'll want to use during setup. Now, after the initial setup, I found myself using the other remote, which is used to control the Android TV dongle and the projector itself. I liked having the smaller remote to turn on and off the projector, and if for some reason I needed to go back into the settings, I could still do so with this remote. Now, if you're one of those people who are constantly changing image settings or HDR options, the larger remote might be a better option for you. The Smart TV dongle was easy to use. Just plug it into the back on the HDMI 2 slot, and you're ready to get started setting up your streaming services. Now, one thing to note, Netflix is not a native app that can be used on this dongle. There is a way to get it working on here, which I'll be leaving instructions on how to do that down in the description below. The front side of the projector houses two five watt speakers by Travalo. As far as sound quality goes for projector speakers, these weren't too bad. They got playing loud to hear voices and details in movies clearly with little distortion. Welcome to the Moroccan Continental. I hope you'll find it to your taste. <laughs> These will get you by in a pinch, but if you're using these in a theater, you will want to get some external speakers to match the energy of that large image. Now with every product, nothing is perfect. Everything will have its limitations and the V70 is no exception. The biggest hurdle that I can see with these ultra short throw projectors is their positioning. You'll either need a TV stand or separate stand like I have to bring the projector up to the correct height. 
And along with that, if you're using a surround sound system like I am, you'll most likely have to put your center channel in a location that's not ideal. Normally the center channel will go as close to the bottom of the TV as you can get it, but with the positioning of the UST, you'll most likely have to lower it unless you are using an acoustically transparent screen. Lowering that center channel is going to get that sound signature lower away from the screen, so obviously that's not going to be the best for your front stage imaging. And I did touch on this earlier, but with these DLP projectors, your black levels are going to suffer a bit. Now with as bright as this projector is and the amount of contrast that it has, you still are going to be getting a fairly dark image. But again, it's going to be more on the dark gray side of black. And although you get good shadow detail, you are not going to be getting OLED or JVC black levels. Now with any outside light, there is going to be some compromises in the image, but I honestly still cannot get over how good this looks down in the basement here, even though we have all these lights on the far side of the basement, as well as overhead lights on part of the time. This really does give a great HDR image that is larger than you would get with a TV screen, and it is completely watchable throughout the day. Overall, with the brightness and contrast that you get from this setup with the Elite Pro AV CLR screen, I can easily see more people switching over to this instead of a TV for their living space. The size and quality of the image along with the ease of setup is something I would not thought possible just a few years ago. Now of course the image looks a lot better in a dark environment or with all the lights out, but Again, this is completely usable for someone if they want to use it during the day and replace a traditional TV that they have in their living space. The BenQ V750i is listed at the time of the video for $3,500 and comes with a three-year warranty. As always, I'll be leaving links down below where you can find this projector if you are interested in purchasing. Now let's move on to the Elite Pro AV Kestrel Dark UST fluorizing screen and what makes it so great for a setup like this. Now this screen comes in a 120 inch and a 100 inch version, which I currently have now. The case housing the screen is roughly 97.2 inches wide, 5.6 inches tall, and 8.3 inches deep. Now I couldn't find a weight from the manufacturer, but I would say this is roughly about 40 pounds. Um, you can move this on your own, but it's gonna be a lot easier if you have one person on either end of the screen. Along with the screen, you'll get a power cord, an infrared, and radio frequency remote and a USB dongle for automatic raising and lowering. Now there are plenty of ways to get this screen to actuate up and down. The first one is going to be on the side of the projector where you'll find a three-way toggle switch. Flip the switch up to raise the screen, back to the middle to stop if need be, and down to lower the screen. This is useful if you happen to misplace the remotes, but the more common method you'll probably use is either the infrared or the radio frequency remote. If for some reason you need to use the IR remote, the IR sensor is tucked back behind the screen housing. The easier of the two remotes is the RF remote. It's non-directional, so you don't need to be pointing it directly at the screen for it to work. Both remotes have the same button layout and function with only three buttons. One to raise the screen, stop it at a certain height, and to lower the screen. I found the remotes very responsive and easy to adjust if you needed to have the screen position anything other than fully erect. The screen doesn't take too long to rise up, roughly 10 seconds, which is faster than this projector takes to start casting an image. The mechanism that raises and lowers the screen are scissor-backed cross spring risers, which you can see functioning here. The screen unrolls as it rises and is held tight on each side with tabs and a tensioner line. The screen itself is the dark UST ceiling light rejecting material from Elite Pro AV and is specific for UST projectors. It has a gain of 0.6 and rejects up to 95% of overhead light. And as I'll talk about here more in a moment, it does a fantastic job at doing so. Along the bottom, there is roughly six inches of matte blackout material to reduce light bleed along the bottom of the screen. Once the screen is raised up, the total height of the screen is roughly 62 inches. So there's all the specs, but how does the screen look and is it practical? Well, setup wise, this is the easiest screen I've ever set up. You can literally take it out of the box, set it on the ground, and you're one button press away from a 100 inch screen. Setting up the projector itself is a bit more of a process, but in my setup video I did for these two products, I had things up and running in about 10 to 15 minutes. If you need the screen somewhere other than the floor, you can either do what I did and set it up on a media cabinet, or there are wall mounting brackets from Elite Pro AV that you can purchase to hang on your wall. Now, another huge thing to consider is just how portable a system like this is. Sure, it's still going to be 90 inches long any way you cut it, but once that screen is lowered, you have a 100 inch screen inside of a case that you can move 
anywhere you need and the only setup that you need to do is plug it in, hit a button and it's ready to go. Another thing I love about this setup is the ability to use a TV set behind the screen for things that we wouldn't normally use a projector for. You can have a TV on the media console or mounted on the wall behind the screen and easily raise it up when it's movie time and you want a bigger, more immersive experience. We actually do that a lot down here in our basement. We are down here most of the time and we're either listening to music during the day or the kids are watching shows during the day. So we don't really feel the need to use that projector. So that is a nice option for us to have. The image quality of this screen is excellent. Colors pop, like I mentioned earlier, edges are crisp and the CLR effect does a fantastic job blocking out light. Here's an idea of how the screen looks compared to the standard white material that Elite Screens offers. The 0.6 gain screen makes for some excellent contrast, though you will want a fairly bright projector to pair with the screen since it has such a low gain. But from what I've seen, any of the newer UST projectors have excellent output to offset the gain of the screen. Viewing the screen from about a 45 degree angle has not been an issue, and I haven't noticed a big difference in color or brightness when going off axis. Now one awesome thing that the screen does is the ability to raise and lower it when powering on or off your projector. It does this with the included USB dongle that you can plug directly into the projector. When plugged in, it sends an RF signal to the screen whenever it senses the projector is turned on or off. This makes automation that much easier for those of you who like a one button setup to turn your system on and off. Now the function of the screen raising is very smooth, but it does tend to sway a bit when it first reaches its resting height. Now this isn't a problem after a few seconds, but I wouldn't be surprised if you had some swaying if there was a ceiling fan directly above the screen blowing air onto it. One nice safety feature of the screen screen has is along the top edge of the housing, both in the front and the back. You can see this rubber line spanning the length of both sides. This is a pressure sensitive strip that will recognize if something or someone is getting pinched as the screen lowers. Now I was a little nervous about how the screen would look after being rolled up for so long. The other screens that I've had after being shipped to me had some little bit of defects in the screen, a little bit of wrinkles. And after, you know, a couple of days being stretched out on their frames, those went away. But to my surprise, this screen has zero wrinkles and zero defects in it once it's fully raised. The tab tension system really works well to flatten out the surface and gives you a smooth image. Now over the past month, I have raised and lowered the screen well over a hundred times and probably closer to 200 at this point, just with normal viewing and testing. And it has functioned flawlessly every single time. There have been zero issues with it raising or lowering and getting that nice flat screen once it's all the way up. Now, before you let the price scare you, yeah, I get it, $4,500 is a lot to spend on a screen, but in my eyes, this is intended for a very specific type of customer. Either you need to be able to access what's behind it, either a TV or you're covering up a window that you don't want covered up all the time, or you need to be able to have a high quality image that you can easily move around from time to time, whether it be for work, church, school, or even in your home if you want to, for some reason, move it around from room to room from time to time. So this sort of setup would be perfect for a home that you wanted to have a TV or a screen in front of a window, but didn't want it covered up all the time. So a lot of homes or condos have really great views and you might not want to be covering all that up. So this sort of setup would allow you to raise your screen whenever you want to watch any content and still be viewable during the day and then lower it when you want to be able to see out and see those great views. And if this sort of setup is too expensive or you don't need a fluorizing screen, Elite Pro AV also has a wall mounted model that lowers that is a little less expensive. Joe and Tell actually just featured one of these in his videos, which I'll link down below. And they also have a fixed frame model of the dark UST material. Uh, the 100 inch version comes in at right around $1,500. And again, it uses that dark UST material, which is the best CLR, ALR type screen that I've seen thus far. So again, I'll be leaving links for everything down in the description below if this is something that you're interested in. So guys, the BenQ V7050i and the Elite Pro AV Kestrel screen have rewritten what I thought was possible with a projector in a space with ambient light. In my last setup, I had a traditional ceiling mounted projector and tested both an ALR and gray screen as well as had another ALR screen from Elite Screens in there. And this setup blows those two away. This really is an option 
option if you are looking to get a bigger image in a space than say 80 or 85 inches that you can get with a traditional TV nowadays and you want something 100, 120 inch, this is definitely a good option to go with. Um, you're not going to be getting those dark blacks during the day. There are some compromises, but colors still do pop really well and the image looks fantastic. So again, if you're looking for a larger image, this is a very viable option for daytime and nighttime viewing. So guys, be sure to comment down below for your chance to win the Rui Pro 33 foot 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable. It's easy for you and it really helps me out. And I honestly wanna know what you guys think of this setup. Is that floor rising screen something that you guys like? Is it extra as the cool kids say? Let me know down below. And also be sure to use the code LIFEOFBLISSB7050i at BingQ's website if you guys are interested in the B7050i projector. That will save you $350 up until September 28th. So be sure to use that code if you're interested. I'll be leaving links to all these products down in the description below. I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you soon.